Tiny Llama is a very, very small model which was trained only on 3 trillion tokens. And in this video, I will fine tune that model. And the purpose here is to make the model learn the common words in the style of Taylor Swift's song lyrics. And the data set, I will uh, give a link to that here. Uh, it's available in the GitHub. Uh, and it's a very popular data set. You will also find it in many other places. And uh, I'm going to use the transformer library, of course, from Hugging Face. And also, it is uh, this fine tuning is a quantized one. That means I'm going to quantize my model on the fly using bits and bytes. And this is the data set. It's a CSV file in this case. And I'm looking at this uh, GitHub repository where this is hosted. And definitely the link I will put in the notebook. So uh, we have three columns, title, album, lyrics. And for this fine tuning, what I'm interested in is uh, interested in this column, lyrics. Because that has got the entire text of each of the songs of uh, Taylor Swift. And one thing to note here is that I can already see there's quite a bit of uh, spatial characters in these data. So we have to first uh, uh, clean, the, clean up this data set a little bit. So let's first uh, load the CSV files and uh, also clean them up. So here in this next cell, that's what I'm doing. So I have quite a few util method here. Uh, find csv files we'll first find the actual csv file and here i'm only using glob.glob .glob module so this generates a list of file paths from the specified directory that conform to the pattern provided the pattern is constructed by concatenating the directory path with the file extension pattern and the file ex extension pattern here uh, is uh, .csv because that's what I'm looking at. And assuming that um, uh, in this particular case, I have kept this input file that is a .csv file into a local directory. Of course, when you are keeping your uh, file in uh, S3 or any other cloud location, you have to change uh, this path uh, variable accordingly. All right, and uh, this is logging.warning. This is just a regular logging, uh, just in case if the files are not found. And then this is just to find the CSV files, and then I have to read the CSV files. So the next method is doing just that. So here I am actually returning a data frame. So that's why I'm first creating just a plain list, then going uh, file by file from my list of file paths. and. Uh, uh, and adding and appending those uh, files into this DF list. And ultimately, I am just concatenating with pd.concat all the DF list uh, uh, so that I get a, a final data frame from this. Now, note that in this case, the column that I'm interested in is lyrics. And that's why I'm doing a check here if column name in df.column. So if the specified column is not found, in the data frame, a warning is logged stating that the column was not found in the specific file. This helps in diagnosing issues with data consistency or incorrect function parameters. And also now take a note of these uh, exception handling here. So if an error occurs during the reading of the file, for example, the file not found, permission issue or corrupted file or wrong file format, uh, or any of any other error, the except block catches the exception. My next uh, util method is this one, concatenate lyrics. So here the purpose is to concatenate the lyrics column from a data frame into a single string. Uh, so that's why I am going if column name in df.columns and my column name is again lyrics. So here in the uh, inside here, what it's happening is, Actually, just looking at the code now, I think there is a possibility of slight uh, subtle bug here. So let me quickly change this particular block here, the block here, that is if column name in df.columns. And uh, then I'll come back in a second. All right, I refactored this particular method, concatenate lyrics. Only thing I changed is I brought in these uh, string formatting method. So basically, uh, I'm ensuring that all entries are strings uh, to prevent join errors because uh, um, this is a requirement for better handling of potential data type issues. For example, if the column contains non-string types, that might cause the join operation to fail. And hence, uh, before joining them, I am doing a str on the lyric. 
uh, for lyrics in df dot column name. So basically, what's happening here is that, uh, like I said again, that we are only interested in the lyrics column here. So uh, if the column is found in the data frame uh, with this line, that is what I mean checking. So if the column is found, the method concatenates the contents of this column across all rows using this new line character and then applying join. Sorry. Yeah, then applying join. So this effectively combines all the lyrics into one large string separated by a new line character, which uh, preserves the division between the original rows of lyrics. And then this final util method that is load and concatenate lyrics is just invoking the other util method. So basically, uh, I'm loading CSV files from specified path, concatenating them and return the combined lyrics. And then in the next cell, I'm just printing a quick thing, uh, which is um, uh, this is a list of all the unique characters. And that's what I'm using set operation here. And this is just to verify uh, that the contents of the lyrics, uh, because uh, in the next cell, I'm going to do some data cleaning job. So before that, I just wanted to see actually visually that what's the uh, unique characters that I have in the lyrics column. And those uh, special characters that I was talking about in the lyrics column are all these, that is uh, this kind of character. So I'm re sorry, I'm replacing uh, these kind of characters with the more simpler English term of that. And I also have a few of these which are like uh, some Unicode characters or some pattern, things like that. So the first thing uh, is uh, this method, replace character. And take a note of these uh, kind of little tricky method that I'm using here, which is str.maketrans. So uh, what's happening here is this uh, str.maketrans, uh, this function creates a translation table and uh, it takes a replacement dict. Uh, this is a dictionary where each key value represents a character to be replaced and its corresponding replacement character. So the key of this dictionary is the character to be replaced and the value is the actual value that I am going to replace with. So this translation table maps Unicode ordinals or character code points of the keys to ordinals of the values. And the str.makeTrans function is typically used to create a mapping table. And that's my inner function, but take a note of this outer function text.translate. So text.translate method returns a copy of the text where each character has been mapped through the translation table. Character mapped to none, that is the keyword none, are deleted. So in this context, it applies the character replacement defined in replacement dict to the string text. And that's why I'm applying this translate method on the text. And uh, if you note that this particular replace character is being invoked right here. So my actual lyrics that is output from this, will be after correcting my lyrics column with the replace letters uh, by invoking this replace character method. Now let's quickly understand this make trans method because uh, this is quite a nifty method that you can apply in many situations. So here I have a dict with a, a key value pair. A has a value of 1, 2, 3, B, 4, 5, 6, C, 7, 8, 9. And then I am applying the make trans method. So make trans method when used with a single argument, such as a dictionary, the keys must be single characters and the values are their corresponding replacements. In this situation, in this example here, uh, strings.makeshift dict creates a translation table from the dictionary dict. The dictionary keys A, B, and C are single characters and their ASCII values are 97, 98, and 99 respectively. The translation table is a dictionary where each key is the ASCII value of the single character keys from dict. And then the values are the corresponding values of the dict. 
So the output 97, 1, 2, 3, 98, 4, 5, 6, and uh, 99789 represents a mapping where A, which has an ASCII value of 97, is replaced by 1, 2, 3. Similarly, B, which has an which has an ASCII value of 98, is replaced by 4, 5, 6, and so on. So this table is used for translating or replacing characters in a string using the translate method. The mctrans function must map characters to their corresponding replacements, and in Python, characters are often managed internally using their ASCII values. This representation allows for efficient storage and manipulation of characters in memory. So when you pass a dictionary to make trans, it converts the keys from characters to their ASCII values because the string translation processes in Python operates at the byte level using ASCII values directly is more efficient for this process. Therefore, in your code here, that is in this example, string dot make trans dict the dictionary keys A, B, and C are automatically converted to their ASCII values of 97, 98, and 99 respectively. This conversion from a, from a mapping table where each ASCII value representing a character in the original string is mapped to the corresponding replacement string as defined in your dictionary. So after applying this make trans, we get the mapping table and then the translation method that is coming back to our original code. Uh, this text.translate. Uh, th th this translation table is then used by the translate method of string object to replace characters in the string based on the provided mapping. For example, if you use this table to translate a string, every A that is uh, th in the original, the key was A, every A will be replaced by 1, 2, 3. And uh, similarly, every B will be replaced by 4, 5, 6, and so on. So anyway, moving on, we have another quick uh, small util method, remove pattern. It is just for using the RE module. I am removing some pattern. So re.sub, this is a pattern. And then with an empty string, I'm removing from the text. And this method as well, we are implementing uh in here right here so my output lyrics is after removing some patterns and what is the patterns i'm removing so for that i have to refer to this remove list which is um, this one so all these uh, braces with um, with an escape all these things i'm removing and after you clean your text you can print all the unique characters of your cleaned lyrics and here when you print it uh, you should not see any of those special uh, unique characters that we just removed. All right, now that um, our, our uh, dataset is cleaned, uh, time to split it into train and test. And for that, I'm using these uh, little util method create train test dataset. Uh, it will take clean lyrics, which is my original clean dataset, and then a train ratio that is 95% is more is for my uh, training and the rest 5% only for test data set and segment length is uh, 500 so for each segment i will take 500 uh, number of data points so the split point is just a single integer number i am only applying int lane of clint lyrics multiplied by train ratio so my train data will be the first 95% up to the split point and test data will be the last five percent and trend test segments this is uh, this uh, line here i am creating i'm making use of the list comprehension of python to create a segment so uh, this line iterates over the train data list in steps of segment length okay okay uh, for each iteration it starts at index i and ends at i plus segment length creating a new segment of the training data. By specifying these uh, segment length as the step size in the range function, it ensures that each segment is of the specified length, except possibly the last segment, which might be shorter if the total length of train data is not multiple of segment length. And uh, remember the range uh, original method signature, which is uh, start end step. So the first argument 0 here represent the start, 
then the second argument lane of train data is the end and step size is segment length and after you create your train data set you can just print the train data set to check the data set structure uh, i am using hugging face uh, data set uh, module here or the library so the structure should be something like this uh, that is uh, features text number of rows 557 which is my segment okay and uh, all right now uh, time to uh, actually uh, do uh, start my training so before that i need to prepare the model etc and like i said it's a quantized uh, fine tuning so my model need to be quantized and i'm using bits and bytes which is on the fly quantization and these are all the parameters or hyperparameters of bits and bytes uh, they are very standard and um, for the model i am uh, creating uh, i am actually using auto model for causal lm and uh, passing the model identifier which will be the name of my uh, tiny llama model all right then i'm defining the tokenizer and also in the next line i am setting tokenizers path token equal to tokenizers eos token now in many uh, fine tuning job of uh, large language models uh, using hugging face transformer library you will see this particular line tokenizer dot path token equal to tokenizer dot us token so why i am setting the path token equal to us token first note that path token is used to fill shorter sequences in a batch to match the longest sequences length ensuring uniform input size for model processing now with the line tokenizer dot path token equal to tokenizer dot us token we are effectively using the same token for padding and end of sequence that is the us token and this is a technique sometimes employed to reduce the complexity of the tokenizers output space especially in generative models where managing different special tokens can impact the model's performance essentially this approach uses one token to serve two purposes indicate the end of meaningful content and fill space in shorter sequences that is padding to match the length of the longer sequence in a batch now the end of sequence token that is a us token on on the other hand is crucial for models especially in a task like language generation signaling the conclusion of a textual input by setting the path token to the same value as the us token you streamline the model's understanding and processing of sequence ends and padding in a consistent manner this is particularly useful in models where the distinction between padding and end of sequence needs to be minimal to simplify the model's decision making process on when to stop generating text in practice this configuration suggests that the training regime for the model in question is designed in such a way that the presence of these shared token at the end or in the padding does not confuse the model for example when a sequence ends and is followed by this token as padding the model learns to recognize the end of content and treat subsequent tokens as irrelevant or at least not let them influence the generated output significantly now let's consider an example scenario to understand in detail so in this example right here we are uh, training a language model on a set of sentences for a text generation task we will look at how using the same token for padding that is pad token and end of sequence that is us token can be beneficial particularly when training data and model architecture are appropriately configured suppose we have the uh, these following two sentences here that is uh, hello how are you this is one sentence and another one is i am fine so when tokenized and prepared uh, for model training each sentence might end with an us token to signify the end uh, like this hello how are you and then an us and again for sentence two i am fine and then an us because that's the end of the sentence now uh, for padding for batch processing uh, for efficient training on gpus sentences are batched together and if the sentences in a batch are of different lengths shorter sentences must be padded to match the length of the longer sentence 
in the batch or actually the longest sentence in the batch and that's what we are doing uh, here so uh, under uh, this first scenario uh, we with different tokens for padding and eos so i am uh, uh, putting this eos here and then uh, the two tokens need to be there for the sentence two because it has got two tokens less than the longer sentences so i have the first as eos representing the end of the content of the sentence and then just to match the length the pad token here so here the strategy is that different tokens for padding and eos so uh, here the pad is clearly distinguished from eos means the model must learn to ignore pad token which can add complexity to its uh, training as it must differentiate between two types of non-content bearing tokens one that signifies the end of the content and one that is purely for maintaining consistent input size of sentences now uh, the next situation is that is the next scenario which is uh, when pad token is equal to us token which is exactly what we are using uh, here that is tokenizer.pad token equal to tokenizer.us token so this is the situation i am looking at in uh, here so here both sentences would use the us token for both padding and end of sequence so here i am putting us because that's the end of sentence and uh, here for sentence two i am initially putting us signifying the end of content and then another us this is actually representing the padding to make the length of the two sentences same so in this uh, second situation the advantages are that uh, uh, first is model simplification so the model only needs to learn to handle one special token that is eos that can indicate the end of meaningful content this reduces the number of rules the model needs to learn potentially speeding up training and reducing the complexity of the model and also consistent handling that is because uh, every sequence ends with us whether it is actually the end of sentence or just padding this consistency might help in some architectures where the handling of sequence sequence ends and padding needs to be streamlined so means uh, in this setup that is in the second situation the model is trained to understand that the first us it encounters might indicate the end of meaningful content and any subsequent us tokens are irrelevant this is contingent on the model's ability to contextualize to contextually discern that subsequent us tokens after the first are not part of the genuine content this configuration works best in scenarios where the sequence end does not have to be sharply distinguished from padding during the generation task as a model learns to treat any output after the first us as not generating meaningful text this can be particularly useful in model designed for tasks where precise control over the end of sequence is less critical or where post processing can easily trim padded output so in other words this means that this configuration pad token equal to us token assumes that the model has been adequately trained to interpret the us token robustly not only as an indicator of the end of a valid sequence but also to ignore it when it appears as padding so the model should have learned very well the contextually contextuality as to when the token is signaling an end and when it is just padding if the model does not learn the distinction effectively it might lead to errors like prematurely ending generation or including unwanted padding in the output so if you are noticing issues like abrupt sentence ending or inappropriate sequence termination in your model outputs you might need to reconsider this configuration one alternative approach is to explicitly distinguish between the us and pad token assigning a unique pad token that the model learns to ignore during training and uh, this would involve setting tokenizer dot pad token uh, to pad uh, that is ensuring it is included in the model's vocabulary and probably handled uh, during the training process 
And if you are working in an environment where distinction between sequence and the padding is crucial or if you notice problems that could be linked to this setup, you might consider using separate tokens for padding and US, ensuring that each has a clear unambiguous role. This might involve modifying the tokenizer's configuration and ensuring your model's training data includes examples that help it learn to handle these tokens appropriately all right coming back uh, i'm setting the device uh, cuda etc pretty standard code and these generate lyrics it's a little util uh, method this is just pretty much for inferencing so it will take a set of uh, query data and a model and generate the actual text uh, from the model so before my uh, training and fine tuning has started, I want to create uh, and generate lyrics and see that how the output is coming. Uh, so I'm taking just the test data from 200 to 700 rows and passing the model. And which is our model? This, uh, this one, uh, this one that we have defined here. And this is a quantized version of the model because we have already applied the uh, load quantized model method. And that's output uh, from after the after the quantization applied. This model is output of that. So this method with this method we can just uh, check uh, and do inferencing to see what kind of output we are getting. And uh, so you just do the normal stuff. That is first you need to encode your query by applying the tokenizer. So this line is doing just that and return tensor is PT because we are using PyTorch and passing it to the device so that the GPU can be used. And then generation config, you need to define it with uh, passing some hyperparameters like max new tokens, pet token ID, etc. And uh, you also define your US token ID. And then after this line, you can actually generate the output uh, with model.generate. And you pass your input IDs, which is coming from your encoding. And generation config is just the one that you defined just now. But these outputs is in the encoded form, so you need to decode it. So in the next line, you are doing just that, tokenizer.decode, and you pass your output, the zeroth element, and uh, skip special tokens is true. All right, the, now this is my text output. And uh, to actually see, I am just printing it uh, with a line break. So first I'm giving the query, and then with a line break, I am passing the output. Uh, so when you when you run this method, you will actually see the outputs that you are getting for these input queries. So this method we can use both before the fine tuning has started, like what I'm doing in this cell, and also we can use it after the fine tuning is done, and then my model will be the fine tuned model, and no more the base original model. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, with this uh, cell, my uh, preparation is uh, fully done. And in the next cells, I'm actually defining the LoRa config because now I want to uh, start for the uh, fine tuning. So LoRa Alpha 32, LoRa Dropout 0 0.05. These are all very standard hyperparameters. You can just quickly check out the documentation in Hugging Face and you will get a better idea. So, and of course, you may check out with different values of these hyperparams. And because I'm using, I am also want to use the PEFT and that's why I'm making use of get PEFT model. And uh, then some more uh, parameters definition like output directory, per device, train batch size, gradient accumulation, etc. Learning rate, logging step, etc. And finally, after you define all those things, you can just bring in training arguments, the, the famous function to start your training. Uh, and here you pass all the parameters, okay? And finally, I am uh, doing the SFT trainer that is supervised fine tuning. So your model is the my PEFT model training data set is trained data set. We have already defined all these things actually earlier. And uh, yeah, and then after these, you just um, run trainer dot train, and this will start your training. And it may it may it may take depending on the size of your GPU, uh, any time between twenty minutes to one hour. All right, so that was the fine tuning job for the entire Tiny Llama uh, project. And uh, uh, you can definitely, after the model training is completely done, you will save the model. The model will be saved in the output directory. And then you can uh, use that fine tuned model to generate your lyrics with these uh, generate lyrics util method.